Hello everyone, welcome to Titan Web Tutorials. In this video, we'll talk about Auto Trigger in the Salesforce integration. All right, so uh, this is our demo project here, and I'm gonna head over to Project Settings and Salesforce, and we see this guy right over here, Auto Trigger. All right, so let's talk a little about what it means. So say in our instance, we have a simple get for a product and we're mapping them into our product page, uh, product catalog page, and I'll show you this in just a moment. And we're returning uh, a list of, of uh, products onto that page. So right now it's set up to be auto trigger. And now what does this mean? So technically, Whenever you have a condition, say you want to filter your results. So in our instance, the get, we want to get certain products to return from Salesforce. So say you would use something like static. All right, so static, auto trigger will not run since it's not dependent on, on an, another field in Titan. So it has to be dynamic for the auto trigger to catch it. So for instance, if I will do field and I'll select like a parameter or something or text or something in Titan. So whenever that value will change, it will run your get and it applies to multiple conditions as well. So if you have a condition that's dependent on two dynamic fields, so whenever each of these fields changes your condition will run so let's uh, let's see this in action and we'll try to do it with multiple conditions as well just so you understand how this runs and obviously we have uh, mapping so we mapped uh, some fields from the product onto the um, onto the strip in our product catalog page all right so uh, let's head over here and I'll go to tools and we'll add a custom parameter and let's call this um, We'll call this uh, product code. And <clears throat> we will just leave it as static. We don't need to map it to the URL and we'll hit apply. All right, so what we will do here, I'll go back to our get and I'll say edit this and I'll head over to the conditions and I'll say product code starts with my product code parameter. All right. Let's add another condition and we will say, um, let's just uh, leave this as it, as it is and we'll see this run and then we'll, we'll do it again. All right, so whenever we, we will set the parameter um, product code, our get will run. Let's publish this and see what we see now. So we'll launch the site and we'll go to product catalog and we get nothing because nothing has set our parameter. And if I'll click on the debug, we can see our product code is empty. That's why nothing happens. So we need to set this since this is our condition, what it depends on. And in our instance, it's a parameter. So let's set this this way. And again, this is just for the demonstration, not necessarily something that you would wanna do. So I'll head over to pages and I'll go to product catalog and let's add a let's add a button over there. And let's add also a text. We can use the search for that as well. So we'll leave it as it is. So we'll do a click to set parameters. All right, and what we will do here is I'll head over to interactivity, configure on click action, effect elements, and I'll go to my product code and I'll say set value and I'll say 11 dash. So whatever starts with 11 dash will be returned to me um, in the product code. Hit apply and publish and I'll launch the site and let's head over to product catalog and nothing happened. 
And if I look at the debug, I can see the parameter wasn't set. Now, once I click this, all right, let's give it a refresh just to make sure our, the changes have taken. Um, once I click this, I can see my get ran. If I look at the debug, I can see that the product code changed. So what happened here was that one of the conditions, one of the, the, the fields that the conditions of this get was looking at changed, and this is why the get ran. So this is the auto trigger in a nutshell. And again, if you have multiple conditions looking at different fields, different dynamic fields, then every time one of these will change, your get will run automatically. So let's try and uh, set this up with the search here and we'll see how this runs. So let's head back to our project and uh, let's add an input. So like a search bar. And let's move this guy over here. And <clears throat> Let's configure this and we'll call this product search. Wonderful. And we'll leave everything as it is. We're not touching anything, just trying to demonstrate the auto trigger. All right, so we'll head back to the product and to the product get. And what we will do is add a condition and we'll do and, and we will say product name starts with product search. All right, so whenever the product search will change, then we will get these results. All right, so let's launch our site. All right, so I'm gonna head over to product catalog. And I'll watch this. We have two things running the auto trigger. The first one, what we're doing is we're setting the um, product code parameter to 11 dash, and that will get me whatever we have, uh, product code starting with 11 dash. And we have the search input searching any product name that starts with whatever input we will have. So let's say I'll do A and search and I get whatever starts with A. Now, one thing to notice here, since our product code is empty, then our second condition um, is not filtering by that second condition. And I'll show you how you can force it to filter by these two or three or four, depends what you're running whenever you're dealing with auto trigger. All right, so let's just say, if I'll remove this and hit search, I'll get all the products I have in my system. Since it's just ran on an empty, uh, on an empty condition. If I'll click to set the parameter, then we get whatever product code starts with 11 dash. Now this is just playing around to, to, to uh, convey the point of how this auto trigger runs. So whenever any of these conditions, so we have the product search and the product code, whenever either of these change, we will run that uh, get for you automatically. So let's say here, I wanna bring whatever is with A again. I'll search that and these are the results I get. Now let's just say I want my condition to run only if these two are present. So what you would wanna do, and we're gonna have a separate video about this, is the um, head over here and it's the run criteria. So what we can say here is, for instance, product code is not empty and the search, product search is not empty as well. So run this get only if these two are populated. So we're gonna hit apply, close this, let's save it, publish, and I'll show you the behavior. So again, this is a part of a different video, but while we're on this topic, 
let's just uh, touch up on it as well. So I'm going to head over to product catalog and if I'll click this, nothing will be returned since the search is empty. And again, this is not something you would normally do with the way I did it with the button and the search. It's just to uh, uh, break this operation down. So if I'll click this now or search, then I would get the data since both of them right now are um, are set. So if I look in the debug mode, I will see product code and product search are both set. So if I'll change this to C and run it, there we have it. And this is how it's done.